Hey guys, welcome back to Bruins' Math Club. Today's topic is common denominators. Now, if you've seen our previous video on common multiples, then you need to know that common multiples is pretty much like the key factor to finding a common denominator. Why? Because when you're finding a common denominator, you take two different denominators and you have to find a common multiple so that you can make those, those two fractions you know, you can add them, subtract them, because remember, in addition and subtraction fractions, the denominators need to be equal. So let's say we have fractions such as 5 sevenths plus 6 ninths. Okay, as you can see, the two denominators, 7 and 9, are different. What you need to do is find the common denominator so that you can add these two fractions. How do you find a common denominator? Well, all you have to do is find the common multiple of these two denominators. So what you're going to do is you're going to write 7 and 9, and you're going to write, list the multiples of each of these until you can find a common denominator, a common multiple, sorry. So let's start with 9. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 3 is 27. 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 5 is 45. 9 times 6 is 54. 9 times 7 is 63. 9 times 8 is 72, 9 times 9 is 81, and 9 times 10 is 90. So as you can see, I've listed them 10, 10 times. I'm going to do the same thing with 7. So 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14, 7 times 3 is 21, 7 times 4 is 28, 7 times 5 is 35, 7 times 6 is 42, 7 times 7 is 49, 7 times 8 is 56. 7 times 9 is 63. Well, I'm, I stopped there because, as you can see, I found a common denomin common multiple of 63 and 63. So I do not need to go on. So now that I've found a common multiple, what I'm going to do is go back to this fraction problem and write 63 plus 63 as the denominators. As you can see, I've left the numerators blank for now. Why? Because you can't just take 5 and 6 and put them because that would change the problem. Because 5 sevenths and 5 63, 5 over 63 is two different fractions, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to see what times 7 gives you 63 and what times 9 gives you 63. So we know that 7 times 9 gives us 63 and 9 times 7 gives us 63. What you're going to do is take these numbers and multiply them by the numerator. So that means 5 times 9 is 45, and 6 times 7 is 42. So our new fractions are now 45 over 63 plus 42 over 63. So now the last step that's remaining is you have to add these. Remember, when you are adding or subtracting, the denominators do not change. You're going to keep them just the way they are. So we're just going to write down 63 as a denominator, and we're going to add 45 plus 42. So if we do 45 plus 42, we know that 5 plus 2 is 7, 4 plus 4 is 8. So the sum of 45 and 42 equals 87, so we're going to put that on top. That means the sum of 45 over 63 plus 42 over 63 equals 87 over 63. Now, as you can see, 87 is greater than 63, right? So that makes that an improper fraction. So it's always important that you take that extra step and make an improper fraction into a mixed number. So we are going to have a topic video on this, but I'm just going to go ahead and change this into a mixed number by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So if I come over here, 87 divided by 63. 63 times 1, sorry, 63 times 1 equals 63, I know that. If I do 63 times 2, 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 times 2 equals 12, I'll get 126. 126 is greater than 87, so I'm going to have to use 63 times 1 to get 63, subtract that, 7 minus 3 is 4, 8 minus 6 is 2. I'm left with a remainder of 24, so that means the mixed number value of 87 over 63 equals 1 and 24 over 63. So that's our final answer. Now I hope you guys understood this topic. Remember, we're going to be having a more um, topic video on how to find how to convert improper fractions to mixed numbers, so it's okay if you guys didn't understand that yet because we're going to explain it thoroughly in the next videos coming up. 
and we hope you keep on watching them and we'll see you guys next time.